Okay, in this session we're going to go over uh, Chapter 3 of the BSCS series. Um, again, it's predominantly, uh, this portion of the lecture will involve visual fields. I'm going to break it up into two sessions so as to decrease the amount of each one and make it a little bit easier for you to bear with. Again, I'd just like to outline uh, or remark that any images outlined in green are courtesy of Dr. Lee Allward from the University of Iowa, who was kind enough to allow me to use many of his slides or images. The blue images are out, that are outlined are taken directly from your BCSC series, section 10 of glaucoma, and the red images uh, that are outlined are otherwise, are mine unless otherwise stated. Okay, uh, visual fields, let's just go over some background. Visual function is a complex uh, thing that can be measured in a variety of ways. One can think of the visual field as a map of differential light sensitivity at different locations or positions in space. And Harry Moss Takir thought of this or described it as a hill of, or an island hill of vision in a sea of darkness. Um, and again, you can picture this little island on the ocean, the ocean being the sea of darkness, the island being areas of sight, and the higher up the island you go, the more uh, light sensitivity you have, therefore the peak of the island would represent the macula. There's typically a little volcano or crater uh, which represents the blind spot. Okay, And typically, as with our light sens uh, sensitivity, there's a gradual transition from seeing to non-seeing areas. Anyway, perimetry is a clinical measure of the visual field. Historically, it's been done uh, measuring differential light sensitivity, usually with an achromatic stimulus at various points in space. And this has been the standard for many years. The two purposes of uh, doing perimetry and glaucoma is to, number one, identify abnormal visual fields, uh, which could represent glaucomatous damage, and number two, to quantitatively or qualitatively assess these over time uh, for possible progression or change. Now, I did mention that uh, visual function is a complex uh, thing. And as such, there are many different methods of measuring visual function aside from our standard visual field that you see in the clinic. Okay, and these include SWAP or shortwave automated perimetry. Uh, that's uh, typically your blue on yellow perimetry. High pass resolution perimetry, pattern discrimination perimetry, frequency doubling perimetry, flicker and temporal modulation perimetry, visually evoked cortical potentials, and ERG. There's also contrast sensitivity. What this tells you is that vision is obviously a very complex function and perhaps we still don't have the most optimal way of measuring it uh, for glaucoma. Shortwave automated perimetry is blue on yellow perimetry. It's basically a yellow background uh, with 500 to 750 nanometer uh, wavelength. It's a violet test target of 440 nanometers. Uh, the advantage of this test is that it's thought to potentially detect glaucomatous damage uh, earlier than standard perimetry because it's thought to preferentially stimulate a certain subset of retinal ganglion cells. Uh, however, it's limited because it has a longer learning curve, greater variability, and it's, um, it's a much more difficult test for patients to, to uh, take. Uh, this is available in the clinic and you can have our technician run the visual field test on you so that you can experience it. High pass resolution or ring perimetry uh, is shown here. This is really more just shown for informational purposes. The light stimulus is a dark ring uh, filled by an inner lighter ring and again surrounded by a darker ring as shown here. Uh, the target test target varies in size and it's tested at 50 locations throughout the field. It's thought that this test can stimulate the uh, parvocellular retinal ganglion cell population and therefore may detect glaucomatous damage uh, better. But it's as far as I know really only done uh, for research purposes. I don't know of any place that does this clinically. Pattern discrimination perimetry, you have a checkerboard pattern on a black and white background, and the threshold is varied uh, or measured by varying the coherence of the stimulus. So you can see in this little bottom image below the various uh, stimulus in that upper quadrant and how it can be uh, difficult to detect. Again, done more for research purposes. Frequency doubling perimetry is something we do have the ability to perform here at Stony Brook, um, although we typically don't measure it. And in this test, the, the uh, test stimulus is basically a low frequency sinusoidal grating that undergoes a rapid flickering or phase change. 
And when you have this phase change occurring, the eye or the brain interprets it as being the sinusoidal grating with twice the frequency of bands. Um, this 